What's going on guys, Killer6 back with another top 10 for you and today we're taking another look at the rarest items in the game, revising my old list and crowning a new champ. I made numerous mistakes in my original video and to amend that I've consulted various experts to compile this list. You can check out their channels via the links in the description below. I've selected the items on this list based on two major things, the actual drop rates and how difficult it is to actually farm for the item. Having said that, RNG plays a huge factor in rarity of items in this game. You may go look for one of these items and get it on the first run, whereas it may take me three weeks to get it, or it might never ever drop in the entirety of my time playing this game. So please know that ahead of time. Let's get into it. Number 10. Number 10 is the Quasar Grenade. This legendary grenade mod can drop from any lootable source, but it can also drop from Ultimate Badass Varkens. But much like other items that are obtained from specific enemies, the Quasar doesn't always drop from the ultis. Just spawning in Ultimate Badass Varkens is quite a challenge, especially if you're playing solo, so definitely make sure that you get yourself a team together and start evolving some Varkens. The best places to farm for the Quasar Grenade are at Tundra Express Farmhouse and Caustic Caverns. Number 9 Number 9, the Bouncing Bonnie and the Fire Bee. Both of these legendary grenades have no dedicated loot source, so they are acquired randomly from any source, meaning they can appear in chests, be dropped by random enemies, or more commonly, you'll get them as a drop from loot midgets. Neither grenade is particularly good, and I wouldn't actually want to go farm either of them, but they're pretty rare to get, so they make the list. Number 8. At number 8, the teeth, the blood, the breath, the heads of Terramorphous. Terramorphous has a notoriously large loot pool that includes specific heads, a blue unique shotgun, an E-Tech grenade, a legendary relic, the legendary pitchfork sniper, and a legendary shield that we'll cover in just a little bit. All of these items can drop from Terra, and occasionally she'll drop two at the same time, but her loot pool is so overflowing with junk that it's hard to get most of these items. Making matters worse for these items is none of them are particularly good. <laughs> the Pitchfork is not a good legendary sniper. The Breath of Terramorphous is not a good grenade mod. Blood of Terramorphous is not a good relic. The Teeth of Terramorphous is not particularly a good shotgun. It has some uses, but it's not great. So all in all, these items are pretty rare from Terramorphous, but they're rare, plus they're not good. Number seven. Coming in at number seven is the Times Four Magic Missile variant. The magic missile itself isn't rare, but the times 4 variant is only obtainable from Ultimate Badass Wizards. Farming these guys for it is a massive pain in the butt though, so most people have gotten this rare item from Lucky Drops at Dragon Keep on their way to farm the Handsome Sorcerer. The only place I've ever gotten one, however, is from Myrtleland's Circle of Slaughter, which is an absolute nightmare place to farm, which brings us to... Number 6 Number 6, the Ogre. What makes the Ogre a tough drop is that you have to survive Merlin's Temple and then defeat the King of Orcs, who is no easy kill, especially with an arena full of traps, obstacles, and other badass enemies constantly trying to kill you. Making this drop even more rare, the Warlord Slog doesn't always drop the Ogre, which means that you have to do it all again. The traps, the enemies, the nightmare. There's a reason why not many people go through the effort for what is probably one of the best assault rifles in the game. Number five. Number five, the Norfleet. The Norfleet is renowned as the best rocket launcher in Borderlands 2 and for good reason. This legendary E-Tech rocket launcher is the most powerful item in the game. It's also notoriously difficult to get, having only two dedicated drop sources in the game, Hyperius the Invincible and Vermivorous the Invincible. Both of these raid bosses are near impossible for most solo players to fight and defeat so you're generally going to need a four player party. Making it even more challenging, both of these bosses have other items in their loot pool that can drop instead of the Norfleet. And if you're trying to get it from Vermi, you're not even guaranteed that you can get him to spawn on your own. Number four. At number four, the Cobra. The Cobra is considered by many to be the most elusive item in the game. However, Gearbox fixed his drop rate somewhat a little while back. Having said that, it's still extremely rare and only drops from the burner enemies in either the beatdown or at the beginning of Mr. Torg's campaign of carnage from the burners in the badass crater of badassitude. Now I've gotten two Cobras, both after the increased drop rate patch and both in the beatdown. To get the Cobra, you need quite a bit of stuff to work in your favor. First, you need a burner to drop a weapon. Then RNG has to roll that weapon as a purple rarity sniper, even though the Cobra is a unique blue and then you need the game to determine that it should have the Cobra Barrel. Most people claim that this combination of things works out to be 0.09% chance to get it, 
but it's hard to say definitively just what the actual percentage is. Regardless, if you want a challenge, go farm for this gun. Push, we got it. We got it. Oh, we did. We got it. We got it. We got it. Number three. At number three, the Twister. Speaking of challenges, the Twister is a unique blue shotgun dropped only from Ohm Ohm Ock. The thing that makes this item so rare is that spawning triple O solo is very difficult, having to evolve badass savages via badass witch doctors, so generally you want to run this with some friends. Secondly, even if you do everything perfectly, triple O doesn't always spawn. I've spent six hours in one day just evolving badass savages only to walk away without seeing a single triple O. However, I've also seen my friend, damn it to hell, evolve six triple O's in a matter of about two hours. So, RNG plays a factor again. When you finally get him to spawn and you kill him, there is a chance that he could actually drop a few other things instead of the Twister, including the Interfacer, the Hawkeye Sniper Rifle, the Breath of the Seraph's Relic, and Legendary Class Mods. So, gather your friends and tell them they're booked for the next several hours, possibly the next several days. Number two. Number two, the 94% Sham. Now, while I tried to keep part variation drops to a minimum on this list, I have to include a few items whose parts are what make them worth having. And the 94% Sham is here because it's the best combination of parts for the shield, giving it its highest absorb rate. The Sham ranges in absorption rate from 76% all the way up to 94%. While the bunker has approximately a 3% chance to drop a Sham, you have to also factor in that there are three different pieces that comprise the shield in Borderlands 2, and of those three pieces, there are nine different manufacturers. You need both of those parts to be Malawan, the battery and the body, both of which are 20 times less likely to roll, and a Hyperion capacitor in order to get that perfect 94% absorption rate. Now, if those odds weren't bad enough, you have to factor in that Bunker can also drop heads or the bitch SMG instead of a sham, so that 3% chance is even worse. In my 3,000 some hours of playing Borderlands 2, starting way back on the Xbox 360, all the way through PS4 and PC, and then a second account on PC, I have gotten a total of two 94% shams. One from Power Repeat and one from Bunker while using Cheat Engine, but without any increase on legendary drop rates. That said, my personal hunt to get a 94% sham on Bunker continues, and this is one for my bucket list. Honorable mention. A few honorable mentions before we continue. There are items in the game like the Skull Masher, the Shred of Fire, and the Nasty Surprise that have one dedicated loot source that is extremely tough to obtain, and then there are certain items obtained during quests by killing enemies that do not respawn, like the Pot of Gold Shield and the Stink Pot, making both pretty rare comparatively. And a case can also be made that Generation 2 Pearlescent items should make this list, as they can only drop from tubby enemies starting at level 61. Further complicating their ability to drop are that the tubby's loot pools are massive, which can give you a skin, a class mod, the bunny, or a whiskey tango foxtrot instead. And the skins that are only available from Vermivorous, Son of Cromrax, or the Son of Mothrak. Number one. Coming at number one is a perfect part of the Hide of Terra Morphous Shield. Like all the other Terra Morphous drops, the Hide of Terra has roughly a 3% chance to drop. But just like other items on this list that have other items that can drop in their place, the Hide shares its loot pool with the Heads, the Pitchfork, the Breath of Terra, the Teeth of Terra, and the Blood of Terra. So that's five other items that can drop instead of the Hide, making that 3% chance dramatically lower. And much like the aforementioned Sham Shield, with the Hide of Terror, we're looking for a perfect elemental resistant variation. Even more specifically, this shock resistant one. And following the same rules as we discussed on the Sham, you're gonna need all three of the shield parts to be perfect rolls. In this case, all Malawan and each of those parts are 20 times less likely to roll than all the other parts that you can get on a shield. I'm not a math expert, but I've been told that that works out to about a 1 in 95 million chance to get a perfect hide. So good luck and happy farming. So there you have it, my revised top 10 rarest items in Borderlands 2. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you have a different choice for number one? Let me know what you think. As always, this list is just my opinions based on a few different factors. Again, I added in some statistical analysis, some personal experience, and some advice from other experts in the game. Again, RNG, the game's determination of what is going to drop at any given time, can be on your side or it can be very, very much opposed to you. So that plays heavily into how some of these items will drop as well. So thank you guys for watching. 
Make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.